kids, when they, uh, 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 how should I, when they slack on certain trainings in their lives, that's where you see most of the time where they stumble. They don't guard themselves, amen. So God has to roll us back and says, this is what I need you to learn. And one of the things that we learned, amen, hallelujah, in the art of war, is that the enemy always prepares for the battle against us. See, what he does against us, amen, it's not a big surprise. He planned that for you when you woke before you woke up this morning. Before you woke up this morning, he had a plan to see what he could do to make you slip and fall. But that's not his main goal. To slip and fall is not to his main. He doesn't want to knock you down. He wants to knock you out. He wants to take your livelihood from God. He wants you to stop serving God. Wants you to get out on the umbrella of God. Wants you to go back and doing what you were doing before. That he can pounce on you even more so. And get my drift. Are you guys with me? Because you're, you're looking at me like deer in the headlights look. <laughs> All right. So he has a plan. Amen. Uh, and I read you, amen, uh, some of the things uh, uh, of the art of war. Where if your enemy secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he's superior in numbers, obey him. And if you can read, if you want to read that book, man, it's for any general, amen, involved in warfare. You know, that is good strategy, amen. But in preparation, Abraham Lincoln said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first hour sharpening my axe. Preparation is important. And we read, amen, 1 Samuel 17, 40, we picked up five smooth stones, amen. And I told you I like that illustration because it not only does it demonstrate preparation, but faith as well. Five smooth stones are what he needed. Well, he thought he needed, amen, to conquer a giant in his life. He didn't pick five rough ones. He didn't pick these stones that, knew, that he knew weren't going to do him any good. The Bible specifically. He picked up five smooth stones. And we're going and we learned about man uh, how to become a smooth stone. One of the things, amen, that we said that I stated is you gotta lay aside all those things that so easily weigh you down. All that sin, amen, that re, that you that, that you give room to the enemy to. You gotta let them go, amen. Let them down. I love you know what you know certain things that you got to understand, and I love the fact that God gives you said, look. If you don't lay this down, you're never going to conquer your enemy. If you don't get past this, it'll be the same thing over and over again. So you have to understand that God wants us to get it right. We, he needs to uh, uh, man, get us into a place where we take the achens off our, our backs. We take, amen, all those things that so easily beset us off our backs. To sanctify ourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Joshua 3, 5. Uh, and we need to go and do this. So one of the things they meant to do. Is to live holy. Give ourselves that space. Give ourselves that time. Give ourselves, amen, that work. You know, you know what sets you off. You do. Don't, don't look at me like, you know. I, uh, <laughs> you know what sets you off. But yet you go visit that every now and then. Because you want Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde action. You know, you want Mr. Hyde to come out of you, amen, because, you know, oh, man, I just want to, you know, let loose every now and then. That's what I got to do, Pastor. I just got to let it loose. Or something. <laughs> what does that mean? So that every time you want to let it loose, you're just going to go, man, and go on a spree? And go sing your life away and then come back? Said, so be not deceived. God is not mocked. You can't, you know, I understand battles, church. I understand that. I understand we all go through it. I understand that some places we stumble and some places we become victorious. But listen to me, man. You don't keep fighting in a front that you always lose at. Okay? If you have a drinking problem, stop going to the liquor store. Well, where can I ask? I go, well, no, let me be more specific. If you got a drinking problem, stop going to the cooler where the beers are at. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. Ain't no harm in looking. <laughs> man, brother, I've never seen anybody lust over a beer can in my life, man. But there are some times you have to understand, you have to let it go. Amen. Are you with me? 
So the second thing that I want to talk to you about, amen, was being fearful. Being fearful. And when you're fearful, how many know, man, you know, you just, it, it, it's, you, you get to that, when you're fearful, nothing moves. Can you say amen? amen? And in our text about fear, Judges 7, 3, 6, it talks about, amen, it talks about how Gideon took the men and God said, you know what, you got too many of them. I don't know about you, but I like numbers when I'm in a fight. You know? If the enemy's got 10, I want 20. <laughs> you know? Well, you know what, you know, uh, man, I'll take off. I don't care if you can take on all 10 of them. I want 20. I want to outnumber them, man. I want to be able to say, okay, we can take you on. There's no problem, man. But sometimes it's not that way. God wants you to fight a battle that you need to overcome. And sometimes you've got to go beyond your fear. Now, Mark Twain, I believe, said it, amen, that fear is not the act. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's going on despite of the fear. Nelson Mandela also said that. Amen. You know, you have to understand uh, that courage come, can come out of fear. Courage can come out of fear if you allow yourself to be courageous. Out of all people, out of all people, Yoda <laughs> said, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. You become fearful enough, amen, you're going to blame God for things. Because you're going to be like, this is all your fault. I told you I shouldn't have went. I told you I didn't know how to swim. I told you that I was going to, I was going to jump. Imagine if Peter would have said that. Peter said, hey, Lord, if it's you, let me bid me to come out of the boat. Man, Peter gave all reckless and bad. And he said, man, it is I. Come. Peter didn't even give him a second thought. He got off the boat. But what made him turn his, way, his face away from the Lord? The winds and the boisterous waves that were still going on. The Bible never said that it, was, that it went down. The, the Bible didn't say that, the, oh, it was smooth. No, the winds were still going. But when he focused his eyes on the thing that was coming at him, fear gripped his heart that took over faith, and faith went out the window. And it wasn't until he focused his, back, his eyes back on Jesus that he cried out, help me. Fear can make you do silly, silly things, man. Like run when no one's chasing. Make excuse for not doing what you need to do. You know, uh, when I was in the Navy, do you know that a lot of people, man, when they joined the Navy, didn't know how to swim? And they had that shock look when they, we went to the pool and the instructor said, you guys got to swim. And they had that look like, why? You know, Navy, you know, water. <laughs> I'm just saying, boats, you know, water. <laughs> I've heard of SEAL team members who didn't know how to swim and join the SEALs. But they let that fear aside and says, no, this is what I want to do. This is what I got to conquer. Theodore Roosevelt said, the best thing you can do is do the right thing. The next thing you can do is do the wrong thing. The worst thing that you can do is do nothing. We're talking about our Christianity here, guys. We're talking about our salvation. And if you wonder why you keep getting rolled back, rolled back, is because you haven't conquered your fears yet. Fears in giving. Fears in witnessing. Fears in praying. Man, if I pray too much, the devil's going to know. And? <laughs> you know, if I, if I, you know, fear, we, what, we, what you are, man, is you're afraid to fail but do nothing and you'll succeed but you're not gonna you're not going to have the victory either can you say amen so we, uh, we talked about fear we talked about amen uh, holiness and fear we talked about our lives not being our own amen no man second timothy 2 4 no man that warred against himself with the affairs of this life that he may please those who has chosen him to be a soldier we talked about, amen, uh, glory to God, uh, 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 man, just giving our lives over to God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20 says what? 
I look at that one, and uh, it was a King James version, <laughs> and Paul wrote down what, like, like a question, like what, <laughs> what, 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 and I'm sure everybody who looking like, what, no, what, what, Paul, what? Well, I'll tell you what. Know you not that you're the body of the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? You know you cut you you you're doing all this madness. You're doing all these things. You want to know why smoking is bad? Why drinking is bad? Amen. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the temple of God. Amen. And, he, and He's within you. It's just, it, and you are not your own. Man, I used to hate it when my leaders used to tell me that. Brother, you bought with a price. You're not your own. Oh yeah? Well, Saturdays are still mine. No, they're not. They belong to the service of God. And what we have going on, you got to be there. He says, man, you're, you're in a place, especially if you're in a place of ministry now. Listen to me. Man, you're in a place of ministry. God's going to put people to you. See, this is what a Pharisee, uh, A.W. Tozer said, a Pharisee is harder on people and easy on himself. Where a spiritual man is easier on the people and harder on himself. People are going to put people in front of you that's going to seriously rub you the wrong way. And we all heard a scripture named Iron Sharper's Iron, but only about Justin told me this quote, but only if you're iron. If you're a piece of wood, man, that, that iron's not being sharpened, man, he's cutting you up. You need to understand something, church. That we're preparing for war. We have been preparing for war. And guess what? The war is here and people of God still twiddling their thumbs going, I wonder when the battle's going to start. And meanwhile, the brothers and sisters over there coming in from the battlefield, man, bruised, beaten, and bloody. Hey, where were you? Oh, wait for the battle to start. I can tell you this, but it started. <laughs> It says, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Romans 8, 9 says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, so be in the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. One individual said, it's amazing that we want to be led by the Holy Spirit, but not filled with the Holy Spirit. How can you be with the Holy Spirit? You know, how can you be led with the Holy Spirit when you're not even filled with the Holy Spirit? How can, how is it, Amen, that we're able to do these things on our own and think that we're functioning with God? We can't. And the bottom line is this, church, is that until we wake up, until we realize that we need to become the smooth stone so we can launch out further, amen, we will still have rough edges. But as God is smoothing us out, amen, we have to understand uh, that God is in control of our lives. If you don't understand what that means, amen, then you haven't grasped surrender. Total surrender. See, I'm not serving God just for the, 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 just for the sake of having a title of a pastor. I'm not serving God just so I have a title of a husband or a father. Amen. I'm serving God because I want to make it to heaven. I want to make it there. And I have relatives that I want to see and go with me. And it isn't going to happen, amen, if I don't make myself available as a smooth stone that I can be launched out and knock the devil out, knock the giant out, knock him down so I can go over and chop his head. It's not going to happen unless I become, amen, what God needs me to be. I was telling Brother Dernice, amen, uh, I said, man, I feel like I'm in a championship round. The old fights are 16 rounds, amen, and I'm in the seventh round, and the scorecard reads 3-3 three, three, and one draw. And I've been slugging it out, man, slugging it out, man. I've taken a few and given a few. At the end of the bell, amen, you know, I'm looking over to the other side where my opponent is at. He's smiling at me, and I'm smiling at him and saying, I'm still here. I'm still here, man. I'm still in it. You ain't calling me out yet. Man, I'm still going for it. Amen. But understand, church, in order for us to be the vessel that God wants us to be, He needs to make us smooth. Yes, amen. He needs to make us so we can fly. He needs to make us, amen, aerodynamic, if you will. Because He has a set target for you. He has a set calling for you. 
He has a set notion for you, amen. Uh, but you cannot go on, uh, man, trying to meet that calling uh, with doing it your way. Doing it my way. We want to be here when times are good. We want to leave when times are bad. We want to be Pharisees and judgmental when it's, it's about the, you know what, but we don't want God to do that to us. We want, to be, we want God to be patient with us. We don't want to be patient with other people. We want this and we want that. And how is it, amen, that we can become smooth stones if we refuse to give up our rough edges? Another thing I want to look about, we have holiness, we have fear, we have not being our own. And I want to talk to you about this, amen, Hol uh, humility, being humble. Being meek. Meek is not a sign of weakness. Meek is a sign of power under control. It's like the, 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 the sons of thunder, man, when they told Jesus, hey, you want to pray fire down on these people? And, you know, when I read, man, I tend, you know, like a story, I tend to visualize the picture of Jesus when they said that. And, Jesus, should we pray fire down on them? And I hear, just picture Jesus going, what? <laughs> the same people I want to save, you want to kill right now? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> well, no, I just thought, you know, you know, you know, that guy, we got this power in you, you know, just a you know, lightning bolt, man, would be great, man. <laughs> I said, no. See, humility, man, one aspect of humility is you're teachable. You're very teachable. And that's one thing I learned in the military, amen, that when you go into the military, you're nobody. You didn't have a name. They didn't call you psycho. We're going to call you spider. Why are you going to call me spider? Because you want you crawling on the ground for the next three days like a spider. Oh, they, man, they humble you really quick because in here, it's all about us. It's not just about you. It's not just about you. It's about people. And if you don't grasp that Christianity is about people, believe me, friend of mine, when people come in, when they come in and they will come in, you're going to look at him with such disdain. And you're going to look at him and say, man, what's his problem? His problem is he just came back from the world. His problem is he's coming in, amen, into the house of God where he never knew about love. He never knew about hope. He never knew about all he knew about is rejection. All he knew about was pain. And now he has a people, amen, coming in, shaking his head, hugging him. And he's pushing you away going, hey, this don't feel good. Why? Because he's never felt it before. You got to be humble enough to say, hey, brother, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Keep coming, man. Let me pray for you. See, the thorn on Paul's side was not meant, it was meant to humble him, not hold him down. See, things that happen, amen, God just wants to let you know, listen to me, you're no better than another person. Humility, amen, is a component to greatness, one man said. He who wants to be great must be low. Jesus said, those words said, Jesus came to serve. Jesus himself came to to serve and not to be served. Humility states that I cannot do this on my own. Humility states that I cannot do this on my own. See, pride stands and brags, but humility bows and bends. The publican and the Pharisee, where the Pharisee stood in his prayers and pointed and said, thank the man of the Lord, I thank you, I thank you, God, that I'm not like him. And God is going over there because you thank me because you're not like him, but you're exactly like him, even worse. Even worse. Look at him. He's either bowed down, he's low, he's beating his chest, he said, God, I'm not even worthy to look up at you. Have you disappointed God so badly, amen, that you were, your prayer, man, was just silence? You know that kind of silence? I don't know about you, amen, but have you ever gotten spanked where you just had that silent cry? You was like, <laughs> or it hurts so bad, you know, something hurts so bad, you're just like, what's wrong? And it hurts. Well, let it out. I am. <laughs> you know that, 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 that pain? I believe that that's what the publican was feeling. God, I can't even look 
forget you. I don't even have words. God, you know who I am. You know what I'm about. You know, Lord, everything that I'm going to do. You know, God, you know, you know I'm going to leave church, God, and you know, man, I'm going to mess up. And God has to change that way of thinking. No, when you leave church, you're not going to mess up. Because I'm going to be with you. You cry out to me, man, and I'll clear the way for you for this holiness. Man, I'll clear the way for you. Understand, church, amen, humility, uh, man, takes away a lot of the rough stuff, amen, that we have in our hearts. Uh, humility takes away the callousness. Humility takes away, amen, the, humility takes away that way. Humility, amen, brings us to a place in our knees uh, that cries out on a daily basis, Lord, uh, how I need you. God, I need you. Many a times people have come, amen, and I've had wives, can you talk to my husband? And I say, hey, brother, man, let's sit down, let's, let's converse. This guy just gets out of the joint, read, read his Bible, man, while he was in prison. And all of a sudden, man, he's a Bible court machine. Yeah, Pastor, but this is the Bible also say this, and the Bible also say this. Say, hey, brother, let me tell you, let me ask you one thing. Of all those scriptures that you mentioned, how much are you living it? How much are you living it, brother? You know the word, man, but how much are you living it? Well, you know, it's a process. It's a process. Now we're in the process. A while ago, you were knocking them out like this. What process? But now God's got his finger on your heart and says, hey, before you utter another word, are you living this? And then they have the yeah, yeah, yeah attitude. Hey, brother, yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and they're really comedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then after a few months, man, they're back in the joint. What happened? I've had people say, man, this is godly sorrow, brother. This is not, this is not worldly sorrow. Well, I don't mean to burst your bubble, bro, but I've been sorrowful for a lot of things in my life. And when it's godly, I mention of it to no one because I am embarrassed. I don't want anybody to come and tell me. So I want God to know, God, I'm sorry. Worldly sorrow is the one, man, you're sorry you got caught. Are you with me so far? Are you sure? Are you positive on that? Okay, good. We have to understand, amen, that God wants us. God wants us. God has called us. You're in the army of the living God, amen. And in the army, amen, there is a protocol. There is a chain of command, amen. And there are things to be done the right way because if you do not do them the way they are being taught or they are being specified, if you overstep, if you understep, if you go too far to the right, too far to the left, we walk on a knife edge. Can you say amen? We have the enemy, we have the, we have the devil, the world, and ourselves to combat every single day. Every single day. I know some of you right now, God, if I you need to add my wife, you need to add my husband, you need to add my kids, you need to know. We battle those three every single day. We make a choice. We make up our mind every single morning. Today I'm going to say stay. We make up our minds throughout every moment of the day. Then we battle the world that wants to know why are we serving God so vigilantly? Why are we serving God so, man, so ferociously? Why, why do you stand in God? Then we got the devil that says, man, you cannot do this. I will be on you every single day. I know what buttons to push. I'll use anybody I can. I'll use your wife if I have to. I'll use your husband if I have to. I'll use your family. I'll use your boss. I'll use your kids. I'll use your dog. I'll use your cat. I will use anything and anybody to get you not only to slip but to throw in the towel. And all the while, amen, we just want to be these stones that God can cast, amen, and do damage, amen. Uh, but yet it's a battle just to be who we are. And church, I want to let you know something, amen. Some of you, uh, I dare say, when I walked in and I felt your spirits, man, you're already defeated and you haven't yet stepped into the battlefield. You know what the enemy calls that? Mind control. He's already led you to believe there's no need for you to go out to the battle, to the battlefield, because I've already defeated you before you even picked up your sword. 
You walk in here, man, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know, man, I don't know. what's he going to say? I don't know. You walked in, amen, and your praise got you out of a pit. But as soon as everything settled down, so did you. And here we are. But I dare say, amen, as I said before, it takes a made up mind, amen. My wife tells me this, amen, you want to go to the gym? Mm, so you haven't made up your mind yet. Because if you made up mind, man, I will go, man. It doesn't matter if I'm tired or not, man. Hey, I want to lose this gut. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to do a few laps. I'm going to go, man, to, you know, I, 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 man, I'm not going to go to the gym and just sit in the sauna or sit in the jacuzzi and I haven't even worked out yet. So what are you doing? I thought we were going to work out. This is working out. It's supposed to simulate, you know, heart rate. <laughs> no, working out simulates heart rate. But you have to make up your mind, amen. If we want to be these smooth stones, if we want to do what God has called us to do, it's going to take work. Listen to me. It took a while for you to get to where you're at before Christ. Christ has to work in you to get all those things, those negative thinking, those things, amen, that God has put upon you. Man, to take it out of you. But sometimes, man, it is pulling teeth. You don't want to let it go. You don't want to let it go because it ruins your identity. It ruins who you are. Man, if I let this go, where does that put me? What, is that, what, 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 what will they say about me? Why are you worried about what others say and not what God says? Why are you so worried about, amen, the reputation that they might give you? What are they going to tell you? That you're weak? Well, tell you what, brother. Tell you what, sister. Come to church and serve God for as long as I have. And let us see who is the weaker one. You can't even hold a Bible for more than five minutes, amen, in school because you're afraid that somebody's going to ridicule you. You can't even pray, amen, in a public place because you're afraid that people will look at you going, oh, look, it's one of those fanatics. You can't tell me who's the weak one. We wear, our, we wear our faith out on the sleeve, man. We pray in public places. Smile, my wife, oh man. Sister Jade prays for people when she goes to the gym. Hey, let me pray for you. I said, what? Huh, what? <laughs> this is a gym, man. We don't pray in a the gym. Then you see that individual put down the weight. Can you pray for me too? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Wherever the need arises, amen. I had a conversation with a brother. Man, he says, man, have you ever taken a vacation? Depends on what you call a vacation. Nothing wrong with vacations. But our vacations only end up, man, the, the, the opportunity arises, man, and we do God's work, man. We do it. But how can you do this, what God has called you to do, if we're still struggling in some of those things I was preaching about? We haven't even made a dent in it. If we're still sneaking in and being sorry for ourselves, we've got into a land of self-pity. And we use that as our anchor, as an excuse. That place and say, oh, woe was me, woe was me, woe was me. Woe was you what, man? <laughs> You know, you want victory, then you're going to have to fight for the victory. You're going to have to lay down all those things, amen. You're going to have to take up your sword. You cannot outgrow this. You cannot, men, run from this. This fight is a fight. You can't run from it, man. Some of you think, oh, man, you know, I tried it. It didn't work. No, you didn't. You're the individual that went to the beach, amen, and soaked there. Just went over there to the waves and let the waves run to your feet. I, I went in the water. No, you didn't. And that's why you hate it so much. You get to your knees, amen, this water's cold, this water's cold, this water's cold. Well, dive in and see what happens. Oh, this Christianity ain't working. This Christianity ain't working. I'm half in, I'm half out. I know that. I ain't giving God the full chat. I know that. I ain't even giving this all that. I know that. But this is not working. No, it works. But you have to do what you have to do in order to make it work. What is that? You have to immerse yourself in this thing. 
Just like you immerse yourself in shopping. Oh, yes, I mean, it's just a room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Forever 21, God will sell you. You didn't go just buy one thing. You immersed yourself. Look what I got for $5. And it was a BOGO, so I got this one, too. Oh, I know about BOGO. Don't worry about it. Don't care. <laughs> you went shopping, man. You, you, you didn't, like, you know, when you were in the neighborhood, you weren't, you know, you didn't have different colored shirts on. You weren't from red team to blue team to purple team to green team to white team. Man, you had one set of colors. You immersed yourself in it. You put your life on it. And now, serving God, we want to go only knee high and then turn around and say it doesn't work? No, you come into this. You come into this man wholeheartedly and see what God will do for you. How do I do that? Be here. Be here. Stop giving yourself excuses. I'm tired. We're all tired. I'm tired. You're tired. Everybody's tired. But all of a sudden, after service, I guarantee you, your tiredness is going to leave. What are we going to do next? I'm up a week now. What do you want to do? Well, I'm going to bed. I got to go to work tomorrow. Oh, me too, but you know, man, I'm, I'm up. No kidding. Can we get that supernatural strength? Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me close it down here. Listen to me. Okay. You want victory in your battles? Then you have to fight until the fighting is done. Hmm? Some people haven't gotten that yet. And I can tell you this, man. I didn't, keep, I didn't quit coming to church simply because I got an argument with my wife. Granted, the ride here will probably be quiet. The ride home will probably be quiet. <laughs> That's just the way it is at times. But I guarantee you, ain't nothing going to keep us coming from church. Dude, you ain't going to keep me from coming to church. You ain't going to keep me from serving God. You ain't going to, man, what are you, crazy? All this for nothing? No. But yet, you let a couple have a little spat and they don't show. And then they say, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? Where were you? You'd be surprised on how short, what showing up does. Hmm? Number one, it disciplines you. No matter what happens, I'm going to be there. Number two, it changes you. No matter what happens, I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to apply what I hear. Number three, it increases your faith. God, look what you've done. Look what you've done. Man, this is great. This is great. But if you don't show up, then you're going to go back to that place where you were before. And you're going to wonder what happened. If I don't show up to the gym, I'm going to gain those weight that I lost before. And I'm going to say, what happened? You didn't show up. You didn't show up. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Church, listen to me. We all go through what we go through. But that's part of our training in order for God to see us through what we need to do. If you're in warfare and I didn't teach you how to use a rifle and I give you a rifle, you're going to look at it going, what what is this for? Well, what am I supposed to do with this? But on the other side of that, you can be trained to use the most sophisticated weapons around. You can use, amen, any kind of fire control tech that you have at your fingertips. You can learn how to use your cell phone to program and do all this. But if you don't use it, then what good is all that knowledge? If you're not engaging it, then what?